An ecosystem consists of all the organisms living in a community, as well as the abiotic factors with which they interact. Regardless of an ecosystem's size, its dynamics involves two main processes, energy flow and chemical cycling. Energy flows through ecosystems while matter cycles within them. Ecosystems are open systems, absorbing energy and mass and releasing heat and waste products. Primary production in an ecosystem is the amount of light energy converted to chemical energy by autotrophs during a given time period. The gross primary production, abbreviated as GPP, is the total primary production of an ecosystem. The net primary production, abbreviated as MPP, is gross primary production minus the energy used by primary producers for respiration. Only NPP is available to consumers. The net ecosystem production, abbreviated as NEP, is gross primary production minus the energy used by total ecosystems for respiration. Standing crop is the total biomass of photosynthetic autotrophs at a given time. Primary production in aquatic and terrestrial ecosystems have different limiting factors. In aquatic ecosystems, both light and nutrients control primary production. The depth of light penetration affects primary production in the photic zone of an ocean or lake. A limiting nutrient is the element that must be added for production to increase in an area. Nitrogen and phosphorus are typically the nutrients that most often limit marine production. On the other hand, in terrestrial ecosystems, evapotranspiration plays a big role on the primary production. Actual evapotranspiration is the water annually transpired by plants and evaporated from a landscape, which is dependent on temperature and moisture. On a local scale, a soil nutrient is often the limiting factor in primary production. Secondary production of an ecosystem is the amount of chemical energy in food converted to new biomass during a given time period. An organism's production efficiency is the fraction of energy stored in food that is not used for respiration, which can be calculated by net secondary production over assimilation by primary production. Trophic efficiency is the percentage of production transferred from one trophic level to the next, which is about 10% according to the 10% law of energy transfer. Turnover time is the amount of standing crop over production. It quantifies how fast the ecosystem is renewing itself. The Green World Hypothesis proposes that several factors keep herbivores in check in an ecosystem, including plant defenses, limited availability of essential nutrients, abiotic factors, intraspecific competition, and interspecific interactions. Biogeochemical cycles are nutrient circuits in ecosystems that involve biotic and abiotic components. There are four major biogeochemical cycles, the water cycle, the carbon cycle, the phosphorus cycle, and the nitrogen cycle. Water is essential to all organisms. 97% of the biosphere's water is contained in the oceans. 2% is in glaciers and polar ice caps, and 1% is in lakes, rivers, and groundwater. Water moves by the processes of evaporation, transpiration, condensation, precipitation, transpiration, and percolation. Carbon-based organic molecules are also essential to all organisms. Carbon reservoirs include sedimentary rocks, fossil fuels, soils, biomass, and atmospheric carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is taken up and released through photosynthesis and respiration. Volcanoes and the burning of fossil fuels also contribute to carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Phosphorus is a major constituent of nucleic acids, phospholipids, and ATP. The largest reservoirs are sedimentary rocks of marine origin, soils, the oceans, and organisms. Phosphorus moves by the processes of weathering of rocks, groundwater runoff, consumption, decomposition, and geologic uplift by plankton. Nitrogen is a component of amino acids, proteins, and nucleic acids. 78% of the biosphere's nitrogen is found in the atmosphere. The rest is found in soils, biomass, sediments, and surface water. Key processes in the nitrogen cycle include nitrogen fixation, nitrification, assimilation, and denitrification. Nitrogen in the atmosphere is typically unusable by most organisms. First, nitrogen-fixing bacteria converts nitrogen to ammonia, which is then converted to ammonium. Next, nitrifying bacteria converts ammonium to nitrite and then to nitrate. Ammonia and nitrate are then assimilated by most living organisms as nutrients. Decomposers degrade organic nitrogen back to ammonium, and denitrifying bacteria convert nitrite back to the atmospheric nitrogen, completing the nitrogen cycle.